What is going on, everybody? It is Dad Bod here. So here we are in our second visit to the Harada Estate. And uh, if you remember anything about our first visit, you would remember this is the area where we fought a lady butterfly. So we are going to fight a boss, but it is not going to be lady butterfly. Instead, it is going to be owl. Um, so just a little bit about this fight before we go in. I'm actually going to take this off so it doesn't waste inventory space. Um, there's a lot of similarities to the first fight against Al that we've already done. Um, he is a bit more powerful this go around, um, but a lot of his moves are the same. He of course has some tricks up his sleeve that we uh, haven't seen yet from his previous from the previous fight with him, um, but I'll just try to point those out as we go. One thing is that is in this round he can do what's called Shadow Rush, which is an ability that actually we could acquire, but but we haven't just we haven't acquired I haven't acquired it in this playthrough yet. Um, and it's it's a very long range thrust attack that we can actually Makiri counter. So uh, we'll be looking out for that. Um, and then also, uh, as with the previous Al fight, if you do your thrust attack, he can Makiri counter you. So let's be sure to uh, not uh, fall fall for that. Um, so you just got to be careful, be on guard, uh, and um, you know, it's learn his moves. And uh, as always, be aggressive, deflect, attack, and I uh, got to learn, kind of learn the rhythm of the fight. So let's have a chat with him. That day, I pulled you from the battlefield, a starving. All right. So he is susceptible to firecrackers, as the uh, previous uh, owl was. Um, many of the same attacks and combos. Throw some firecrackers. Get some free hits on him. His his posture. Oh, he he does. I couldn't I couldn't counter it there because it was in a corner. But he does that elbow move. Um, he does that elbow move combo where you can run around to your right and get behind him while he throws the firecrackers. Uh, I was not able to punish it just then because he was in that corner and, you know, um, that's, if you, they, that's, that's a, uh, he, there's the elbow combo and I was kind of messed that up, but, um, you know, that front flip attack, that's the same as the first fight. Uh, this little sweep attack there. And this one, ugh, that one, you have to time it correctly. Um, you don't want to simply, uh, there's his uh, Shadow Rush that I just Makiri countered. Um, let's see here. So that attack where he puts the sword over his head and like kind of charges up, you can deflect that. Um, but your best bet is actually if you time it just right, uh, you can get behind him and, and get a couple hits in. If you try to get behind him too early when in, in his charge up, then um, he's actually going to counter attack you and uh, it's not going to go well. So just take my word for it. You want to be able to, you have to wait for just a few, just a brief moment. There you go. Get behind him for that elbow move and firecracker attack. Um, hopefully he'll do it again so I can show you what I'm talking about. Um, all right. Throw some firecrackers, because why not? Got a hit in. Whoops, but he got a hit in, too. All right. Thought I healed, but I guess not. Thought I pressed the button to heal. So that's that's the move I'm talking about. And if you if you back away too early, he's going to try to hit you. But Shadow Rush, Makiri counter. Ah, oh, he got me with his firecrackers. Come on. All right, first phase down. The second phase, he gets a couple new moves, um, but really at its, see, he disappears into his owl and you just want to run around because he'll fly around in his kind of owl form and then eventually he'll he'll try to drop down on you and do a kind of a plunging attack. So as long as you're on the move, when he's in his owl form, you will not get hit by his plunging attack. Um, those slow firecrackers get a couple hits on him. Because you do have to do some vitality damage to him, otherwise his posture is his posture damage is going to recover too quickly. So this, he like throws his owl at you and it creates fire, and then he follows it up with Shadow Rush. So if I was close enough, I would have been able to Makiri counter his, his Shadow Rush, but he was too far away. So again, he went back to his owl, so I ran away. Um, 
So I, I ran away, so that way his, his plunging attack didn't kill me or hit me from his from his owl state. Oh. All right, dodge. So right, if you dodge right at the end, you can get behind him. That was kind of his overhead charge attack. Um, oops, that was too late on that hit. And there we go. Oh, he's back into his owl, so run. And he'll plunge down. And then if you're quick enough, you can get a couple shots in. All right, whoops, I, 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 I uh, moved to the side too early for that. All right, so he's going to do his fire attack. So jump. And then you're ready to Makiri counter shadow rush right after that. Right after you jump over the fire, you have to Makiri counter shadow rush. Or at least be far enough out of range. I'm going to do some firecrackers, get some hits in, do some vitality damage. There's this elbow move, run to the right, get behind him. Uh, missed, missed that opportunity with the firecrackers, but it's okay. Yep, dodge right, dodge right at the, oh, he disappeared into his owl. I get, I couldn't hit him. Um, all right. Almost got him. Whoops. Spoke too soon. Elbow move. Up. Oh, good. At, man, I was stuck between him and the pillar. That's that really sucked. Um, all right, I'm going to heal up. Actually, I'm going to throw on some confetti while I'm at it. Elbow move, run to the right. Oh, he did He did it again. He disappeared into his owl right after that combo. That really sucks. Um, but unfortunately, oh, nope. Didn't get there quick enough to... Jeez, he does so much freaking damage. All right, heal up. Up. Uh, is it owl attack time? Yep. Jump. Mikiri counter. All right, almost got him. Elbow move, got him. Sweet. All right, that is it. Get the finisher death blow, and our job here is done. By my own son. <laughs> not entirely unpleasant. Perfect. So we get the memory. And the aromatic flower, which is what we needed uh, to perform the the alternative ritual to immortal severance that Emma was talking about. Which immortal severance, Kuro has to die, and then this other ritual, uh, Sekiro has to die. But but in in the process of doing so, Kuro returns to a normal human state. So uh, yeah, this is this is for the purification ritual. One who seeks purification may impart the dragon tears and those flower these flowers to the divine heir of the dragon's heritage, thus severing the shackles that bind the immortal bearer of dragon's blood. Um, okay. So not too bad of a fight. I mean, it's... he, he the, the, the big thing with this fight is that Owl, he just hits so hard. So if you take damage, I mean, it's going to be like half your health in one hit. So it's, uh, you know, you really got to be... Um, Got to get uh, familiar with his attacks and, and rhythms. But fortunately, it's similar enough to the first fight where it's not that huge of an adjustment. Um, but you'll get it. Uh, Al took in the hungry cub on a whim and raised him as a shinobi. The process was so engrossing that he hoped they might enjoy a true battle to the death someday. He got his wish, if only in an old memory. Okay, so we are actually going to travel back to the inner sanctum where the divine child resides and we're going to take care of the rest of her side quest so a quick note on uh, what we just did with owl if you haven't put the pieces of the puzzle together if you remember we got stabbed through the chest the first time we went to harada estate when we fought lady butterfly to try to rescue kuro and that's when kuro uh blessed us with the um with the uh power of resurrection if you haven't put the pieces of the puzzle together yet it was owl who stabbed us through the chest after that Lady Butterfly fight. If you recognize his sword, and then uh, going back to fight him in that same room later on in the game, and that op optional encounter kind of confirms that, um, that it was Owl who stabbed us, thus prompting Kuro to give us the power of resurrection. So if you've been following my guide so far, um, we have uh, gotten rice 
from the divine child twice, and we've given it to each of the old ladies who gave us hints on how to uh, obtain the serpent's viscera, uh, the dried and whatever, the dried and fresh serpent's viscera. Um, and so this is our third time to request rice. Please take this rice. Thank you. Bless us with bountiful harvest. You have my gratitude. Of course. Rice is a precious thing. Remember to chew properly before swallowing. Thank you. Okay, so now that we've acquired rice from her for the third time, it actually triggers something if we rest. This only happens if you request rice at least three times. She becomes sick. So let's talk to her. I'm glad you've come, Shinobi of the Divine Air. What's wrong? It is nothing serious. More importantly, your rice. Hold on. You don't look well. Rest. Yes, I understand. What can I do? What? Is there something I can get you? Well, then, then I'd like to eat a persimmon. All right. So she requests a persimmon because she's not feeling well. You've come to visit Shinobi of the Divine Air. And hopefully you have one in your inventory. If not, you can go to the merchant um, at uh, in Senpo Temple. Um, and I believe he has them for sale. But hopefully you have one in your inventory and you can just give it to her here. I found a persimmon. Truly? You brought me a persimmon? Eat. Yes. Thank you. It's sweet and delicious. Good. Shinobi, hold out your hand. But no need to hesitate. Hold out your hand. All right. A bountiful harvest for you. More rice. And thank you, Shinobi of the Divine Air. The crop is plentiful. Thanks to the persimmon you gave me, I ask that you also give some to the Divine Air of the Dragon's Heritage. I will. Okay, so she gives us rice for Kuro as well. Rice that has spilled forth from the hand of the divine child of re rejuvenation, intended to be a gift for Kuro. Rice is precious. I want nothing more than for the divine heir of the dragon's heritage to get better. Kuro would likely be pleased to receive it. So, as that would suggest, we need to go back to Kuro's room in the upper tower of Ashina Castle, and we will deliver him the rice that was given to us by the divine child. All right, here we are, and there's Kuro. So let's give him the rice. Wolf, you're back. I am. I have something for you, Lord Kuro. Something for me? Here. All right, give him the rice. It's rice. Yes. The divine child of Senpo Temple told me to give this to you. She did? Then I am grateful. This looks like good rice. <laughs> Each grain glistens. It is sweet when you bite into it. Bite? Wolf, rice tastes a lot better when cooked. My lord. Hmm. So do you like sweet things? I will eat anything. Which means you don't dislike sweets then. Right. I'll make something nice for you. Something... Nice. <laughs> You'll have to wait and see. Okay, so wait and see means rest and talk to him again immediately. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting, Wolf. Come now, hold out your hand. My lord. All right, so we get the sweet rice ball. Sweet sticky rice ball made by Kuro using the rice from the child of rejuvenation. Slowly grants medium vitality recovery and constant posture recovery over time. Once when the wolf was starving, his father wordlessly hand in, handed him a rice ball. It was astoundingly delicious. This one is sure to taste just as good. What is? Sweet sticky rice balls. I made them with the rice from the divine child. Eat it. Don't be shy. Okay, so he gives us two of them actually. Um, 
So uh, we are going to go back to the divine child and give her Kuro's rice ball. And um, that triggers the next event in this sequence. I believe once you use all of your rice balls in your inventory, I think Kuro gives you more. I'm not sure. Did you give the rice to the divine heir? Yes, he made rice balls out of it. The divine heir of the dragon's heritage? He made them himself. Yes, and he was enthusiastic. He did? Oh, I see. He may be the divine heir of the dragon's heritage, but he's still human after all. What am I saying? Of course he is. I am sure he had his doubts about severing immortality as well. Yet even so, it is the path he chose. There is something I would like to ask you, Shinobi of the Divine Heir. Yes? What is his name? Lord Kuro. Lord Kuro. It has a fine ring to it. I should like to meet him someday. Shinobi of the Divine Heir, you are welcome here. Farewell, may the harvest... I think we have to rest again. And so she is gone. So where did she go? You might be asking yourself. Well, it just so happens that she has returned to the Halls of Illusion where we fought the folding screen monkeys. Um, so we have to teleport back here and she will be waiting for us. She's just kind of chilling right here. Don't want to lose them. But if I were to choose the path of returning the dragon's heritage, it may come to pass that I would have to leave all of you. Thank you for your kind words. <laughs> My friends, listen, he is actually quite kind. He gave me this. Hello? Oh, Shinobi of the Divine Air. I didn't hear you come in. It is thanks to you that I've been able to have a deep conversation with my friends. With the children of the Rejuvenating Waters? Yes. There is something I would like to discuss. I believe we should aim not to sever the dragon's heritage, but instead to return it to its rightful place. Return the dragon's blood? That's right. The dragon's heritage was set free from its homeland, and it drifted here to Japan. Its power was never meant for this land. Until something is done, it will continue to corrupt the lives of those who encounter it. The dragon's heritage and those connected to it. It is only right that they return home, to the west, to the birthplace of the divine dragon. However, there is one problem. I am unsure of the exact destination. Who would know? Perhaps the High Priest of Senpo Temple. Or... And he is? He's the founder of Senpo Temple. I wonder how old he actually is. He can be found in a narrow cave, not far from the Inner Sanctum. Shinobi of the Divine Air. Yes? This path differs from that of the one to sever immortality. I do not wish to force my opinion upon you. Should you wish to return the dragon's heritage, then perhaps you should seek out the High Senpo Priest. I'll think about it. Okay, so, you know, we talked about the the two options that we have uh, for, for basically getting rid of of the uh, immortality. So there's the immortal severance route with which Kuro must die. There is the purification route, which Sekiro must die. But as it turns out, there might be a third possibility where, you know, uh, the divine child just mentioned that the dragon's heritage is not native to Japan. However, it drifted here from a, from a faraway land to the west and, um, 
Her preference is actually to return the dragon's heritage to uh, from where it came. And uh, so in, in doing that, perhaps it's not necessary for one to be slaughtered by way of the mortal blade in the dragon's tears um, for, uh, for, for immortality to no longer exist and the corrupting influence thereof uh, would be taken away from this land. So <clears throat> she sent us on a, on a little mission to uh, obtain something from the high priest of Simpo Temple. Um, and the location of what we are seeking is through this cave. So if you haven't guessed, um, you know, these different options that we have to get rid of, of the dragon's heritage represent the different endings of the game. Um, so we get to a point later on in the game where we just, if, if you've done everything that we've done so far, uh, you have a choice on which path to take, and that choice is yours, and that dictates which um, which ending you'll get. Now, if you do no, if you do none of these side quests, you will only have one choice at the end of the game, and that choice will be uh, Immortal Severance, which is basically the default ending of the game. But um, doing it, doing all of these side quests, it gives us options, and um, you know that will that will impact you know how the game actually ends and um, what happens with the, with the dragon's heritage. So let's pick up this item. We get the Holy Chapter Dragon's Return. Sacred passage on a path to enlightenment. Undying, I pray for the dragon's return. Undying, lo, let us wait an age for the divine heir to assimilate the cold dragon tears, for the cradle to consume the pair of serpentine fruits. Let the cradle endure, giving him shelter, granting his return to the west. Okay. So turns out the high the high priest of Simpo Temple is dead, but he um, gives us what we need nonetheless. So we can use the homeward idol and return to the last commuted idol, um, and we'll have to go back to the inner sanctum and back to the hall. You know, I think I think. Um, if I recall the, uh, yeah, she should be back here. Okay, good. Um, so let's give her what we just obtained. Shinobi of the Divine Heir, have you perhaps met with the High Priest of Senpo Temple? I found him. He was dead. The High Priest was infested. How could this come to be? I do not know. However, he left this note. I will take a look. Hmm, I see. Consuming two persimmons of the serpent will allow one to become a cradle for the divine heir. This will make it possible to return the dragon's heritage to its homeland. I, I shall become the cradle. You're sure of this? Of course. I am the only surviving divine child of the rejuvenating waters. Death does not come easily to me. Shinobi of the divine heir, if you wish to take the path to return the dragon's heritage, then bring me two persimmons of the serpent. Where should I begin? I believe it is said that the liver of a great serpent is stained red like a persimmon. Okay, so it turns out we actually already have those. Um, you remember we got the first one from the snake in the cave where we had to make the monkey dance? And we got the second one by sneaking up on the snake from above and doing a plunging attack. Um, let's see. Yeah, they would be key items. Um, should be in here somewhere. There we go. Fresh serpent viscera and dried serpent viscera. So we already have those. If you've been following this walkthrough, you probably have them as well. So Shinobi of the divine we can give them to her. Have you acquired both persimmons of the serpent? Yes, I've found them. This shade of red, it is as I expected. A persimmon is an apt comparison. You're actually going to eat them? Of course. Doing so will allow me to become a cradle to return the dragon's heritage to its home. However, I hesitate to eat them in front of you. Please come back after some time. Okay, so let us rest. Uh, 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 
It turns out it's quite a painful process to do what the Divine Child is doing. But I believe if we rest again, or maybe two more times, or something like that, there we go. Doors open again. No. Oh. Shinobi of the Divine Air? Are you there? Your eyes. Ah. Uh, you have returned, Shinobi of the Divine Air. It appears... I have succeeded in becoming the Cradle. Could you please take my hand? Yes. What? It is cold. Much like an ice house. Which is why. See? My tears. They freeze as they flow down my face. These frozen tears. Take them. Okay, so she gives us the frozen tears. Tears that were shed by the Divine Child of Rejuvenation once she became the Cradle. They are but frozen drops. By having Kuro drink both the dragon tears and the frozen tears, the cradling ritual can be performed. Cold dragon tears are just that. Frozen tears. Does this mean... Yes, I believe this is what the text referred to as cold dragon tears. The divine heir must drink them together with the dragon tears of the divine realm. If he does so, I believe Lord Kuro will be able to rest within the cradle. All righty. Shinobi, what would... So we... Shinobi, I look for... We are done with this side quest. We've done all of the steps needed um, to be able to select this particular uh, ending of the game. Um, so with that, in the last episode, we um, killed some... Uh, killed the headless mini-bosses. In this case... Um, we're going to kill the Shichimen warrior, Shichimen warriors, um, which are another uh, group of apparition type bosses that are quite difficult to face in the beginning of the game. But again, once you have the correct uh, tools and items and whatnot in your inventory, they're actually not so bad. Uh, so much like with the headless, we're going to use the mottled purple gourd to ward off terror. And we're going to use divine confetti and or the purple umbrella. Um, your approach really just depends on what you want to do. Um, can I get there from here? No, it does not appear that I can. I need to warp to a different spot. My bad. I thought I could get there from, get there from this idol, but either I'm just having a brain fart or I need to go... <laughs> To need to go through the well, um, which would be the Ashino Reservoir. Strange. I thought I would have been able to get there from that idol, but it appeared to have been blocked off. But no need to fear. Actually, we could have gotten there from the abandoned dungeon as well, but. Nonetheless, okay. So I'm not even gonna bother with fighting. I just need to get to the well. And I'm just gonna run there. Do a little wall kick. And I do not believe anything should be standing in our way from here. So we fought one of the mini bosses. And I don't think there's anything underwater in here, but might as well make sure while we're here. Oh, there is something. Nibu Balloon of Soul. Would not have hurt us or killed us to uh, leave that behind, but whatever, we have it. Okay. So. Take care of these things. Oh, don't give me poison. Come on. Okay. I thought there was a idol. What the heck? Okay, I guess I just warped to the. I just warped to the wrong idol. That's what it was. So there's the Shichimen warrior, um, as we did with the uh, headless. I'm going to use an Akko sugar, 
use some confetti, the mottled purple gourd, and jump down and engage the fight. And you can see we are doing crazy damage to this guy, especially with our confetti. So he's going to warp, and those purple skull things cause terror. So you want to look to see where he warps to, and he warped across the room, and you definitely want to use your purple umbrella to block that attack because that will do some terror damage to you. So let's finish him off here. Oops, took a couple shots, but that's okay. Got the first death blow. And he'll probably warp again, yeah. All right, where to, where to, where to? You want to make sure that you're facing him when he, when he uh, respawns, because he'll do this attack right away. So you want to make sure that you can block it with enough time to spare. Oh, my confetti ran out. It's actually easier to kill these guys without confetti than it is headless. Um, he also does an attack where he, like, he, he summons a uh, purple skull from above. I want to see if he'll do it just so I can show you, because the only way I know of to block that attack is by using the umbrella. You can also do this where I'll shoot a bunch of skulls at you. You can use the umbrella for it. I want, I want him to summon his um, the thing from, the, from above. Oops. All right, so he's going to teleport. Um, crap, where is he? There he is. So again, use your, use your purple umbrella to block that attack. There there he is. There's the ones that he, he like summons the, the large ones from, from above. The only way I know of dealing with those is, is by using the umbrella. So once he's done with this attack, I'm going to use uh, projected force and do some pretty killer damage to him. Um, he's teleporting again, so I'm going to see where he respawns. Over here, charge up the umbrella by absorbing the uh, terror-based attacks. Absorb these, and one more shot with projected force should get him. All right, come on. All right. Oh, he... He hit us in the meantime, so it kind of stopped my attack. All right, let's try it now. There we go. Got him. So... Not as, in my opinion, these guys are not as hard as the headless. And for uh, for our trouble, we get the ceremonial Tonto, a dagger with a stark white blade and hilt, converts vitality into spirit emblems. R resting replenishes its charges. Originally, this Tonto was used in a ritual offering to the dragon in which an emblem would be cut from one's own life force and set adrift on the fountainhead waters. The blade is inscribed with its true name, Devoted Soul. So what this does, um, is it allows you to convert health into spirit emblems. So if you've played Bloodborne and you're familiar with the uh, concept of Quicksilver bullets and you run out of those and you could press the up button on the D-pad and it would, it, would, it would take away your health and give you blood bullets, it would give you extra bullets by, by taking away health. Um, this is basically the same exact concept. You see why I, I have like the steam coming from me? That's because I still have charge from projected force. So if I were to do that, then it uses my projected force attack and then that gets rid of the, that little steamy effect. Um, and so basically if you wanted to ever use it, uh, the ceremonial Tonto, where is it? There it is. Um, all, all it does is it, it, it'll hurt you, it'll take away health, but it'll give you spirit emblems if you're low on spirit emblems. So, could get you uh, out of a pinch. Um, and now, actually, is where we want to travel to the Ashina Depths. I just got turned around. This now we want to go there, yeah. Because um, there is another Shichimin warrior down here, and um, just I guess I just got it uh, got it backwards. Doesn't matter. You can do this one first, but I just usually do that other one first for whatever reason. Um, I just skip these dudes and run away. Hope I don't get shot. And down where we fought the second version of the Guardian Ape, 
There is now a Shishimin warrior. Um, I'm gonna throw on my Akko sugar. And I am running low on divine confetti. And the mottled purple gourd. And for starters, I just kind of go to town. Oh, so he's already teleporting. Uh, to where? We don't know. There he is. Avoid these little purple skulls and go back to work. All right. First death blow down. And now, where is he teleporting? There he is. Let's see if we can get some shots in. Oh, is he teleporting again? That is lame. We're probably going to run out of our confetti, but that's okay. We can use projected force. No worries. Yep, we did run out of confetti. And you can see that you, we are actually doing damage even without the confetti, but it's just not very much damage. So without confetti, I just prefer to use projected force on him. And you can see that does a hefty amount of damage, so... I think you can just you can just kill him if you have confetti, but by no means is it a requirement. So absorb these skulls. Let's do a projected force on him. And he's almost he's getting he's getting there. Come on. There we go. Oh, he's teleporting. There we go. Oh, got him. That was enough. Okay. And for this one, we get the Malcontents Ring, an old ring well suited for slender fingers. Kingfisher is engraved on the underside can be used to upgrade the finger whistle prosthetic tool. Wearing this ring as you blow the finger whistle will create a somber tune. The weeping voice is full of solitude and beauty, possibly somber enough to temporary, temporarily quell a voice of rage. Okay. So that allows us to upgrade our whistle to the malcontents whistle, which is something that I do because it is used, I use it for precisely one boss fight in this game, but it is a massive help in that boss fight. So uh, let's go back to the dilapidated temple and we can probably do some um, some prosthetic upgrading here, um, especially since we just got the malcontent ring. Um, and so um, that is our reward for that fight. All righty, here we are. Let's have a chat with the sculptor, our old friend. A true wolf would choose for himself how to use his fangs. The look on your face tells me you've done just that. All right, let's see here. So we can up upgrade to the malcontent since we have the ring that we just got from the Chichimin warrior. Let's upgrade that. And this requires, we have the materials, we just need the money which we can use our coin purses to get. So we need 1,500 for the Suzaku Lotus Umbrella, which guards against Listen, fire attacks. That finger whistle I've fixed onto your arm. I'm sure it'll play a somber but enjoyable tune. Make sure you use it well. Okay. Um, so let us use... We needed, what, 1,500, so we can just use, uh, just for the sake of keeping a heavy coin purse in my inventory, I'll use three of these. You have a slightly different air about you now. It's as though you've overcome something. All right. Let us get this. And you'll see we have the last tier of the flame vent 
uh, upgrade is is ready for upgrade. Um, but for this, we need a material called Lapis Lazuli. And that is the only place in the game really where you can get that is in the Divine Realm. And so that is required for these last tier of upgrades. Hey, don't be afraid to go all out. All right. So speaking of the Divine Realm, I don't want to keep it from you any longer. So we are going to go straight there and we're going to carry forward. So let's warp to where we fought the uh, Corrupted Monk. And um, let's see what lay ahead. The Divine Realm is actually one of my favorite areas in the game. It's just a very picturesque and beautiful landscape. Um, there are some tough enemies in this part of the game, as you can imagine, because uh, it is the last um, section of the game that we've yet to explore fully. So start by dropping down here. And very traditional Japanese architecture and you know, cherry blossom trees, the whole works. Um, so one of the new enemies in this section of the game, you see uh, these little guys playing their flute. They're like the palace nobles and um, they don't seem hard to kill, which they're not as long as you have the element of surprise and in this case a barrier between us but you can see he's doing this attack where he's like trying to suck our life force from us and if he's successful in doing that if this barrier did not exist he would be doing it and it would create a status effect known as enfeeblement enfeeblement makes it so you can't attack you can hardly move and it takes away your ability to resurrect so essentially what happens is if he casts enfeeble on you he's going to run up to you and then kill you and basically like one hit and you're, there's gonna be nothing you can do about it. And you will die, take an actual death because you will not be able to resurrect. Um, and so best to approach these stealthily or at least not give them enough time to, uh, to suck away your life force and, and do the, their enfeeblement uh, status effect. You might be tempted to jump in this lake. Um, there happens, you see just off in the distance on that really large tree branch, there is someone up there who, unfortunately, if you swim, casts lightning. And yeah, so do not go in the water because that'll happen to you. Speedrunners have figured out a way to get in the water and go where you need to go without worrying about that thing. But uh, you got to you got to be good in order to do that. Um, so the way forward for us is going to be through here. Anytime you hear that music, you hear that little flute, that means that one of these guys is nearby. In this case, he's right behind this folding screen. So let's uh, dispose of him so he cannot enfeeble us. And there's another one over here. So my goal is to not get enfeebled. We'll see if, if I succeed in that or not. But um, sometimes I do, and it's incredibly annoying, as you could probably imagine. Um, you just have to, to, to mind your step. Um, so up on this rooftop, we're going to see a new type of enemy over there. You can see that one's just sitting over there. These are known as Okami warriors. Um, there's been a couple points in the game where Okami, lore, uh, Okami warriors have been referenced in the lore notes and whatnot. Um, when we read like item descriptions and such. So if you remember, uh, uh, the Okami warriors... Um, they, of course, exist in the Divine Realm, and they have lightning power as... Well, some of them have lightning power, as demonstrated by that, that person over there. Um, if you remember from some of the notes we read and item descriptions and whatnot, um, you, c you might remember that the Snake Eyes, uh, the, the Snake Eyes women um, from the Sunken Valley um, are uh, relatives of the Okami warriors. Um, and also, you may remember that Lady Tomoy, who was the uh, protector of Lord Takeru before uh, before Kuro existed, uh, was, an, was an Okami warrior herself, which is why she had lightning power, and which is where uh, Genichiro got his lightning power. So here we have a lump of grave wax, and again, this is for used for the very high tier 
um, weapon upgrades. So you definitely want to get the, the grave wax when you can get it because it is fairly rare. Um, actually, the uh, palace nobles, the uh, grave wax is a rare drop from them, I believe. But it is it is quite rare. But if you need to get extra grave wax, that is a spot where you can get it. Um, that one hasn't noticed me yet. And I think there's a palace noble in there, so I don't want to just rush in yet. I'm going to wait for a more a better opportunity. I'm, actually, I'm just going to pop out, lure her over here. Come on. So that way I don't have to worry about the palace noble, if there is one right there, which I think there is. And these, these can be pretty tough. They have quick attacks and... Um, you know, it's a different style of fighting than some of the other enemies we've faced thus far in the game. All right. So I think there's a palace noble back here behind. Yep. Oh, there he is. He saw me and he's trying to enfeeble me. Forget about me. He's still trying to enfeeble me. There we go. Let's get him. So as long as you rush in and get him before he has a chance to to try to enfeeble you, you should be fine. But <laughs> you got to be quick. Otherwise, you will be toast. Um, let's grapple up here. I think we got all the enemies around here, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't think there was an item up here or anything like that. So good stuff. All right. <laughs> Okay, so don't jump on down yet because if you look down here, you'll notice there are some wolves. And these wolves in the Divine Realm have lightning capability. Um, they can shock you. So I recommend taking them out from afar. And um, I think we did. There's, I think there's some more down here, though, around the corner. So got a heavy coin purse. Nice. Yeah, there's 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 some more. Yep. Come on. There we go. Oh, there's more. Trying to get him in stealth. Because if you get him in stealth, it's a one hit. There we go. Got him. Some precious bait. The texture is slimy and something resembling horn seemed to jut out of it. Just the kind of bait the master loves. Ring the bell and drop the bait. Oh, there's some more of them. Whoops, I wasn't locked on for some reason. That's weird. There we go. Okay, why did that not hit it? There we go. There we go, got all of them. Running low on spirit emblems though. Got three left, but I don't think I'm really gonna need any more anytime soon. All right. And there is another palace noble in here. And oh, look, there's another dog or wolf or whatever they are. All right. So the palace noble. Right. It was added more dogs. So I'm actually going to go through the front and get the noble first. And I'll take care of these. Hopefully they won't shock me. That one's already dead. Okay, good. Perfect. That worked out well. Some adamantite scrap. Oh, there is another one. I thought I thought they were all dead. Okay. Well, now they are. Um Perfect. Alright, so I think we got all the stuff around here. Um Unless there's an item on the roof, I can't recall. Oh, there's an Okami warrior. Yep, oh, there's another one. Is there anything up here other than those warriors? Does not appear to be so. Okay, whatever. Anything long here, or is that all? Okay. Looks like we are good to proceed. 
Um, now this particular section, um, beware because it is palace nobles galore. I use a lot of um, stealth, so I'm going to need to go ahead and refresh my spirit emblems because I'm going to be using the Gatchen Spirit Fall that we obtained from one of the headless enemies. Is that? Yep, that's a palace noble. So I'm just going to do the old run up. And he barely started to build my enfeeblement um, status, but did not quite get there. The palace nobles have a craving for the vitality of youth. They can't help themselves. They want nothing but to sap away more and more of it. I see. The courtyard ahead in particular. It is accursed. It's crawling with palace nobles. If you must forge ahead, you'd best go around it. Okay. Well, you can take her advice. I think there is an easier way around that helps. But, um... So the bite down. I think this is actually a good application for bite down if you get enfeebled. Um, and just take the death. I think it, I think that's the only thing that gets rid of the enfeeblement status. So what I'm going to... I'm not positive on that, and I'm not about to find out for sure. But I think so. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my Gatchin Spirit Fall. Because look at all these palace nobles and they're they're just all over the place in here um so you get this one and to make things interesting there's a few okami warriors spread throughout this area as well we're gonna get this one from behind as well hopefully so peek around this corner there's another one, but accompanied by Okami warriors, so beware. I'm just going to get him real quick first and then deal with the warriors. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> that was close. Um, all right, what's up? And again, I say, what's up? Oh, come on. Let me throw my firecrackers. There we go. All right, one of them down. And now that we got the other one one-on-one, -on -one, shouldn't be too hard, right? There we go. Oh, some divine confetti. Nice. We needed some more. And there's an item down here as well, but beware. It is accompanied. Can't remember if there's a palace noble in here, but at least... Yes, there is. Oh, dang it. This might be bad. All right, run away. All right, let's get him. Whoop! <laughs> okay, cool. Yellow gunpowder. Four yellow gunpowder, actually. And some eel liver. Worth it? Probably not, but oh well. So you can actually grapple up here into the ceiling. And um, is there no item up here? Okay. But what it does is it allows you to drop down and surprise attack this uh, palace noble. So, of course, that's exactly what we're going to do. But for safety, we're going to do some Gatchin Spirit Fall to enhance our stealth. Oh, well, we landed on something, so oh well. And we get another lump of Grave Wax, which we're going to need. So, uh, you can see this part is littered with the Palace Nobles. But fortunately, we have stealth on our side, so... We can go about it safely. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Maybe not so safe. 
I'm actually gonna get out of here because they saw me. And there's another one back there, so yeah. I'm actually gonna run around this way. Hope my stealth doesn't run out, but it probably will. Oh, I knocked over a thing. All right, I'm gonna wait for this to dissipate so I can re-engage my Gatchin spirit fall. Where are you going? Hmm? You gonna turn around for me? No? You coming right over here? Oh, that's too bad. That is just too bad. Whoops. I'm still gonna get you. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter they saw me. You're still dead. Sucks to be you. And also sucks to be you. And a couple of commies in there. Try to get one of them stealth. Nope. Ah. Uh, I don't like this whole two on one thing. Got both of them with firecrackers. Come on. All right, I get it. Oh, jeez. Try to get both of them with the firecrackers. There we go. All right, got the first one. Tried to jump on his head, but couldn't make it work. Oh, well. They were guarding an adamantite scrap. All right, I think that's it for in here. Um, but of course, you hear the relentless playing of the flute. All right, this guy can do the lightning attack. The purple ones can do the lightning. Come on, just keep doing that. There we go. And there's a noble right there, so run up, get the kill quickly. And there's another one right there, so make sure that he doesn't enfeeble you. There we go. <laughs> we got so much. So he, he dropped some fat wax for us. And I hear the sound of another one. Though I'm not sure from where. I thought we got all of them. Did we not? Okay. So this is actually a secret. You can dive down in here. Um, and there should be a passageway. There we go. Up here. Whoops. Treasure carp scale. Another treasure carp scale. And in here, we have a water of the palace, a cup filled with divine waters, a drink popular with nobles of the palace. When a wedding procession arrives at the Fountainhead Palace, this is the drink they are greeted with. The nectar of the palace nobles, go ahead and drink to your heart's content. All right, so this is actually something we can give to the priest Another treasure carp skill we can give to the priest of Mibu Village. Um, so we will do that. I heard another whistle. I It's driving me crazy because I thought we killed all of the palace nobles. Um, yeah, I definitely hear it. Is there one that we missed? There's a way to get on the roof. Let's see if we can pull this off. 
Nope. Nope. Okay. Trying to figure out what, uh, which one we missed, because I thought we killed all of them. And it's, no, uh, no, 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 no. I thought we got all of them. Someone's breathing. Okay. I think that's it. Alrighty. Um, so on just the other side of this here gate, We have a sculptor's idol with which we can rest and um, what we're also going to do is uh, this is if you need to grind for fat wax or grave wax this is actually a good spot to do it you can rest there get this noble get this noble and we weren't lucky, but if you need to grind for it, this is the way to do it. And then, then just rest, rinse, and repeat. So we have four uh, skill points. So I'm going to go ahead and get Living Force, which is the highest tier. And that gives us the Master of the Arts trophy. Um, basically, all that was required for that trophy is to max out any of the available skill trees that you have. Um, and let us go back to Mibu Village and speak with the, um, speak with the priest who we can give that item we just got to the, uh, we can give him that item that we, we just got from the, um, Fountainhead Palace. Just run along here, pay no mind to anything, and there's his little house. Always jump over this guy, not even worth the time to fight. Slide on under here. So he's asking for the waters of the palace, which we just got. Oh, please, please accept us as your humble servants. So let's Hello. give it to him. Take this. Oh, this fragrance, such an esteemed aroma. Finally, we may be accepted. We may serve as their humble servants. <laughs> at last, at long last, you let me give you this. Okay, and we get some Dragon Spring Sake for our efforts. Um, I believe we got some of this earlier in the game. We bought it from the merchant. Just outside of Mibu Village. And that's it for him. Um, 
All right, guys, I think we're going to go on and cut this one here. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, hope you are, most importantly, enjoying your run through this game if you are playing it as well. If you're just watching, hope you find these entertaining. Hope you find the story engaging and the, and the uh, gameplay very satisfying. Um, please consider joining the squad by subscribing to the channel. Also, leave a like and a comment as well. Let me know what you like about uh, these walkthroughs or maybe what you'd like to see different uh, in the future. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Have a great day. And I will see you in the next one.